the stage is set for the Dutertes to hold their position in national posts. With Sarah running for president and her father, President Duterte, eyeing the Senate seat. That leaves Davao up for grabs. Vice Mayor Baste Duterte is left in Davao to keep the Duterte fort. But the issue now is, will the young Duterte be at par with more experienced candidates? Tonight, we talk about your leaders and their performance. Mula sa kanilang karakter hanggang sa kung ano ang ilalatag nilang solusyon sa inyong problema. Because after all, all politics is local. Davao City, the top vote-rich spot in the southeastern Mindanao region, the third vote-rich city in the country and stronghold of the Duterte clan. Life is here, they say. But in recent years, Davaoenos have been on the receiving end of the tragic effects of climate change. And the city's growing urban problems have become too big to ignore. Few have come to challenge the Duterte family's rule over Davao City. But President Rodrigo Duterte and his daughter Sara Duterte Carpio are simply unbeatable. It was a done deal. Mayor Sara would run for re-election and secure the Duterte family's position in Davao as the president ends his term in 2022. But in the days leading up to the deadline of filing for candidate substitution, a lot has happened in Davao City politics, which shook the political scene in the entire country as well. The president's son, Vice Mayor Baste Duterte, backed out of his re-election bid and was pushed to substitute for his sister for the mayoralty post. Sara Duterte Carpio went on to run for vice president, ending speculation about her election plans. But this is what Davaoenos are asking. Can the neophyte Baste continue the already three decades of Duterte leadership in Davao? Or will the post be swiped by a challenger whose family has also held power in Davao for decades? But before we begin, a short disclaimer. We have also sent an invite to Vice Mayor Baste Duterte, and we are still waiting for his reply. And with that being said, joining us tonight is the man who dared to face the Dutertes in Davao. Let's welcome former Congressman Attorney Rui Elias Lopez. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Good evening to Sir Taruk and uh, Cheryl. <laughs> Good evening to your viewers. It's good to have good evening, you in sir. the program. And this time, we'll talk about politics. Ang tagal niyong nawala sa politika, Attorney Rui. Um, when was that? Kailan po kayo yung uh, huling term niyo as congressman? What year was that? 2007. 2007. Oh, so That's yung mga my... millennials, baka hindi na rin po uh -huh. nakilala yung kilala. Pero ang Lopez family ay kilala po sa politika, ano po, dyan sa Davao. Pero medyo matagal na pong nawala. Kung kayo, kayo po ay nagbabalik ngayon, paano nyo po ipapakilala sa mga taga Davao si Attorney Rui Lopez? Sino uh -huh. si Attorney Rui Lopez? Uh, well, uh, I introduce myself sa mga tao. Uh, starting with, uh, I am, uh, I graduated in uh, elementary in uh, Light Bringer School that's in Marcori Heights at Dabao and I graduated high school in uh, Ateneo de Dabao High School. I graduated with honors. Uh, went to UP, uh, enrolled as a, graduated as a uh, AB Philosophy graduate. And then uh, fortunately, I passed the entrance exam for the UP College of Law. And uh, after I graduated, I immediately enrolled in the College of Law in uh, UP. Uh, graduating in 1985 no? and then after that uh, 1985 I passed the bar and then uh, my father called me to his office after I passed the bar and he gave me uh, an envelope with, uh, and when I opened the envelope inside was 2,000 pesos and suppose uh, my father told me he was the mayor at the time my father told me okay uh, yan ang kauli-ulian mo makuha sa akin. So, I immediately found, found uh, no, look for work. Started as a 
University Legal Council in UP upon invitation of uh, then President of UP, uh, Edgardo Angara, and then uh, worked uh, as a confidential attorney in the Court of Appeals because I was thinking of uh, becoming a judge and or a justice if I be able to achieve that. And then uh, my father became a congressman in 1992. And then uh, my father said, my, when, when he won as congressman, it's the first time that my father will be working and holding office in Manila because all throughout his life is in the vow. So my mother, my mother ko sabi niya, uh, tulungan mo daddy mo sa Congress, uh, establish his office, and then uh, establish his office kasi first time ng daddy mo. So I became a chief of staff of my father for only one year and a half uh, because I said uh, this is not a job for me, but I established his office, the working, how to uh, train the staff and how to uh, relate and uh, coordinate with the offices in Congress uh, and all those things. Then after that, I I uh, joined the, uh, no, the NAPOCOR because at that time they were looking for a legal advisor for the IPPs, independent power producers, yung mga lati to mga mga generation companies, no under contract with the with the or under bidding with the NAPOCOR. So I became their legal advisor, and then uh, after a year, eh, pa ulit ulit yung trabaho, so I get bored and uh, join a law firm. We we established a law firm in Makati, and I practiced uh, law. And after that. While practicing law, one night, my, father, my mother called me and he said, uh, your daddy died today, tonight. So when I, my father died, naturally I have to go home to the vow. And then after the, during the week, mga tao sa Davao were, I mean, ang daming tao. In fact, uh, so they were telling us na someone should continue my father, etc. So after that, after the burial, the entire family, kami mga kapatid, sampo. I have uh, six, seven, there are seven boys of us and uh, three girls. And pinag-usapan namin, yung sinasabi ng tao. And uh, I vote, I, I, my, my opinion was sa uh, tao, politika. Because all throughout our lives, as a politika ang pamilya, you know, big a sacrifice. Pero some of my siblings wanted us to wanted to continue in politics if the vote was five 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 four five against my mother broke the tie and he said what well if your daddy was alive wanted someone to continue so the decision for us was to continue and who will continue well uh all my brothers and sisters uh my eight brothers and sisters uh voted for me Kasi kami kung sino yung sino mag-continue. So we'll, we'll go to make the sacrifice and continue my father. Continue my father's legacy. Nagbotohan kami. Eh, yung mga kapatid ko, ako binoto eh. <laughs> Daya talaga nila eh. Ako mag-sacrifice eh. Attorney, so, attorney yung uh, running for mayor ng Davao City, was it a purely uh, family decision? O meron hong kumimbinsin na uh, partido? o mga elders po ninyo sa Davao, uh, aside from the family decision, huh? No, there was no family decision. It was only my decision. Your decision. Nobody knew. Decision. Nobody knew that I will file. Nobody knew that I will... B Balikan lamang po sige, natin sige, ng kaunti sige, sige. yung inyong history, ano, yung profile, kasama po yung inyong pamilya. Before po kami magdetalya na bakit nga ba kayo tumatakbo ulit ngayon. Mm -hmm. Pero kasi... Maganda po ang relasyon eh ng pamilya nyo, ng Lopez. Paano po ba nagsimula yung Lopez Duterte na kumbaga ay yung friendship po, ano? Magkaalyado po kayo dati. Paano nagkalamat yung inyong uh, alyansa at uh, closeness ng dalawang pamilya? Well, uh, it's it's there in the, in the in the yung sinulat ni ng Mindanao News by Carol Arguilas. It's there. Uh, Kilala ko na si Rudy Duterte uh, when we were young, the vow. And then, 
uh, I, I knew na fiscal siya. I even know the mother niya. It was a pillar of my father when my father was the mayor. Um, Pre-March, mother ni Flor, yung father ni Rudy Duterte was a former governor but lost. No, pero kapartido ng father ko. So, as even there when uh, when it was decided between my father, Ring Almendras, Senator Almendras, and uh, the, the late uh, Nonoy Garcia, who is, who is, whose children are now the representatives in the second district. And I was the fourth person, and they were discussing who, who they, they want to be as candidates for mayor in 1988. Because my father was a mayor from 1981 to 86. In the local elections 1988, my father doesn't want any more to run. And uh, I was there. And uh, they they decided when they went back to the vow, and I was there too, in their caucus, that uh, since walang candidato si Landing Almendras and Nonoy Garcia, that is acceptable, because Landing Almendras wanted my father to run again as mayor, and my father did, didn't want any more because he made double bypass na siya. He cannot anymore cope with the work. So he said, uh, Rudy Duterte, who was the, who was a uh, volunteer to my father's campaign, if my father will run for mayor, Rudy Duterte volunteered. And my father called Rudy Duterte, sabi niya, oh, sabi niya, Rudy, halika, uh, bukas mag-file ka for mayor. Sabi ni Rudy Duterte, Sir, may, di ba abogado ka? Alam mo mag-file, file ka bukas for mayor, candidate. That's what happened. And uh, I was with my father when we campaigned for Duterte. So until uh, my father died, until my father died, 1997, uh, Rudy Duterte was, uh, an, uh, which I should say, a minimum uh, protege. But I would say it was, he will always go to our house, even he was the mayor. And when he, he he knows that my father came home from Congress, from Manila, and is there in the house in the bow. Duterte will go to our house and uh, bring pollutant and inuman, and then uh, uh, talk to my father, discuss anything, whatever it is. If he has problems, how to solve it, etc. In the bow, etc. Something like that. Huh? And then. Uh, Attorney, uh, excuse po. Uh, sabi yes. pa nga po, eh, ang nag-mentor talaga kay Pangulong Duterte, eh, yung ama ninyo, no? si Elias. No, nabanggit po yun dun sa libro na binabanggit nyo kanina. Eh. Pero bago po namin ano, itanong pa o mag-elaborate pa tungkol dyan, I think we need to pause for a break, Cheryl. Okay. No? Okay. Stick around because we will be back talking about the track record of Attorney Roy Lopez right after this break. Entertainment, sports, at balita. Magsulit TV na. Digital at malinaw. May extra features pa. Siksik sa saya para sa buong pamilya. 890 pesos lang. No monthly fees. Joining us tonight is the man who dares to face the Duterte's in Davao, Attorney Rui Elias Lopez. When I filed my candidacy, there are people, of course, was happy that I tumakbo ako. Finally, a Lopez challenge to Duterte, as they say. Tingin po ninyo ang suporta ng mga Davaoenyo, eh, kumihina na para sa mga Duterte? I just found out, yung mga tao pa sa Davao, takot sa mga Duterte. Balik 
balitang mahalaga sa iyo. Mga balitang tungkol sa iyo. Kinumpirma ng Malacanang na may go signal na ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang pagbabalik classroom ng mga estudyante. Pinag-aaralan ng pamahalaan kung gagawin booster shot sa healthcare workers o gagamitin na sa mga menor de edad ang limitadong supply ng bakuna sa bansa. Extended na hanggang October 31 ang deadline ng voters registration. Tampok ang mga nag-iinit na balita tuwing tanghali. Yan po ang mga kumabanderang balita at public service sa tanghali. Ako po si Cheryl Quasin. One Balita Pilipinas. Lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 12 ng tanghali, dito sa One PH. You're still watching All Politics is Local with Attorney Roy Lopez. Attorney, balikan ko lang yung uh, naiwan nating uh, topic. Ano? Eh, totoo bang ang nag-mentor dito kay Pangulong Duterte ay inyong ama na si Elias? Um, mentor, in, uh, when, when Dudy Duterte goes to my father and uh, seek his advice or his views, when, he was, when Duterte was the mayor, no in mentor in that sense no but uh, always kasi my father hindi siya nakikialam kay Rudy Duterte when he was the mayor he doesn't want to and there in fact there were civic organizations like JCs Lions Rotary punta sila sa bahay to talk to my father complaining about the way Duterte runs the city and my father will always Uh, tell them, uh, mahirap, mahirap, mag, mahirap magturo. Sabihan si Rudy Duterte, si Mayor Duterte, kung anong dapat gawin niya. I was also once a mayor, and uh, I don't want people to tell me what to do. So my father didn't interfere. But my father uh, introduced him to, we helped him, my father really helped him carry, carry Duterte for Uh, his electoral, first electoral campaign to be introduced to the people kasi hindi naman siya kilala eh. So, in 1988, ang kampanya kami, the entire city, with my father, I was with my father, kampanya kami, but my father was not a candidate. Tinulungan lang niya, tinulungan si Duterte to win. No? And, uh, uh, well, maybe mentor, yes, in that sense, no? But, mm -hmm. And the, the way sometimes kung advice ang father ko, when Rudy Duterte asks for it, no, my father will tell him, uh, this is how you should do, this is the better way, etc. You know, how to serve people, etc. But uh, at this early, I will tell you, hindi, hindi, hindi tinuro ng tatay ko yung pagpapatay, pag-corruption, pag-abuso ng power, maging hari, no, hindi yan tinuro ng tatay ko. My father was totally different. Mm -hmm. Attorney Roy, naging maganda po yung relasyon. Hanggang ito po ba ay nung nawala po ang inyong ama, yung pong naging problema o nagkalamat yung relasyon ay ikaw na at si uh, President Duterte. And when was this? It was in uh, 2007. But before that, after my father died, uh, so both of us, me and Rudy Duterte, became congressmen in 1998 to 2001. And then, uh, in uh, 2001, he decided to go back to run for mayor. Siguro na, na I don't know. Hindi, hindi niya type siguro yung trabaho ng congressman. I don't know. But anyway, he told me. Right? Iba yung reason niya. Uh, reason niya is politika. Eh. He told me. But anyway, he wanted to run. And he was running against the incumbent. Nakasama namin sa, sa local party. Mm -hmm who we campaigned to become mayor in 1998 by the name of uh, Benjamin de Guzman, no? who was Duterte's vice mayor. So, in our group, now in the vow, nagbangga ngayon si Rudy Duterte and Ben Guzman. And both of them uh, were asking my support to their candidacy. Rudy Duterte even uh, uh, asked for, ano, uh, kinausap ako. And uh, 
I had difficulty deciding who to support. Because most of the politicians, Garcias, Mograleses, Luis Santos, whatever, and everybody else from our country to Davao, past and at that time current, naturally they were supporting uh, the incumbent mayor. Incumbent mayor, yun eh. But uh, I was the only one who sided with uh, Rudy Duterte. Mm -hmm. And he was very happy that I sided with him. So, uh, sabi ko sa kanya, si, tayong dalawa. Laban natin sila lahat. And in that election, 2001, we won. We both won. So, so, and uh, 2004, he wanted, I asked him, who will we support for president? Para kung sino ang presidente mo, mayor, hindi yun na lang ang, ang kampanya. Ikaw man ang, ano dito, leader-leader this davao. And he said, kahit sino. Hindi naman natin kailangan rin ng sino ang kanyang presidente. So I chose to to support uh, FPJ. Mm -hmm. He supported GMA. But uh, we were together. And then on my last term, 2007, that's my third term, that's the end of my third term, uh, uh, I can't anymore run. So he asked me, do sa bahay niya, ni Rudy, he asked me, sabi niya, what will you do, Rudy? Sabi ko, hindi naman ako, hindi naman ako pareha ng mga politiko dito sa Dabao. Yun na, yan na lang ang kanilang uh, hanap buhay. And negosyo, sabi ko. Pareha naman tayo, sabi ko, Mayor. We're both lawyers. Ako, after my third term, I'll just go back to law practice. I'm a lawyer. Hindi politika ang aking hanap buhay, no? Ang aking hanap buhay as a lawyer. Itong politika, public service lang talaga ito. Service sa publiko. And then, uh, he chose to he he chose to, as his running mate Sara Duterte and I I asked for an audience with him and uh, we talked there in uh, after dark and I told him uh, that's not good Sabiko Mayor that's not good uh, your Sabiko uh, there's no check and balance Sabiko you know? Papunta yan sa corruption eh, and abuse of power, sabi ko. Hindi tama yan. Sabi ko sa kanya. And he, dis he disagreed with me. He wanted, he wanted uh, to have her, to have, to, he, he wanted Sarah to be the mayor, he told me. Gusto ko si Sarah mag, ano, eh, mag mayor. Sabi ko, okay lang. Kung gusto mo si Sarah mag mayor, but uh, sabi ko, what? As vice mayor. Gusto mo siya introduce sa politika, let her run as counselor, not, but not as vice mayor. Let her run as counselor. And I said to him, hey, Rudy Duterte, if you want, sabi ko, ngayon pa lang, 2007, in 2010, pagtakbo ni Sarah for mayor, committed na ako. I'll campaign for her. But don't make her as your vice mayor, sabi ko. Father and daughter, mayor, vice mayor. Walang ibang pupuntaan yan, sabi ko. He disagreed. So we broke our alliance there. Yeah. Because I told him, Sabi ko, Mayor, I cannot bring the name of my father, Elias Lopez, sa ganyang gawain. Niloloko mo ang tao. Sabi ko. Hindi ko dali ng pangalan ng tatay ko in that kind of one. So, we broke our alliance. From there, wala na. Wala na po. Wala nang komunikasyon. Wala na ho ba magbula 2007 na sinubukan na magkasundo muli. Magkabalikan kumbaga ng Lopez at Duterte. Yeah. No. Because I retired from politics and uh, went on my life. Okay, now, balik Basic puntahan, children. puntahan oh. po natin, Attorney Roy, your track record. Kasi nagbabalik po kayo. Pero mga tao, teka, kung ikaw isang alternatibo, eh bakit? Bakit kita pipiliin? Ano ba ang track record mo? Ano ba ang nagawa mo or kaya mong gawin sa Davao City? Um, it's like this. Ito yung, my father, ito ang ano ng father ko eh, yung parang sort of team of whatever, when he was a congressman. It's in Visaya. Uh, my father said, Dili ang sulti maoy pabuhaton, ang buha maoy pasulti. So, whenever, whenever kami nung araw, even my father and me, 
na media man as a uh, uh, anong nagawa na etc. Ito ang amin sagot sa those who are asking. Mm-hmm. Ang sira sagot ng ibang my father, ganun tong sagot namin. Uh, kung ako magsabi ko anong nagawa ko, baka palakihin ko pa para mukhang maganda. Mm-hmm. Eh hindi naman maganda 'yun, so, hindi tama 'yun. Mas mabuti eto tanungin na lang ninyo yung mga taga barangay mm-hmm. at 82 barangays in our district or this tanungin niyo sila kung ano ginawa namin mm-hmm. kasi yun sila nakakaalam mm-hmm. because uh, as my father said what anong in bisaya kasi unsay among binuhatan kini mga binuhatan na inyong mamakitan sa inyong mga mata inyong mahikap sa inyong mga kamot o inyong matumban sa inyong mga lapalapa And when we return, how will Attorney Roy solve the problems in his constituency? All that after this short break. On the go, awesome viewing experience ba ang hanap mo? I-link ang inyong Signal prepaid or postpaid subscription to Signal Play today and get the best of both worlds. Panoorin ang inyong favorite channels, shows, and more anytime, anywhere. Hashtag tara sa Signal Play. Magandang magandang umaga mga kapatid! Ang gusto nyo ba'y maganda at kompletong umaga? Dito na tayo! Dahil nandito na sila, Ted Bailon at DJ Chacha! Maghahatid ng mga pinaka-importanteng balita. Department of Health, isinusulong ang House... Pakulong Duterte, handa o manong... Makabuluhang panayang. Sana merong isang maliwanag na bata ka rin. At malalim na talakayan. Ang 9-dash line na ito ay walang bisa at walang basihan. But wait, there, there's more. May pampremyo. We're giving away 6,000 pesos. Paligsahan. Masayang kamustahan. Ilang taon na kayo ngayon, Ate Gay? Mga umigit ko nung lang po. <laughs> Hindi mawawala ang nakakabaliw na kulitan. Bawal lumabas. Pero pag nag-comply ka, <laughs> pwede na. Kung tugan, <laughs> meron din sila niyan. Parampam-parampam, sumabay lang sa bayo, sarap sa pakiram. Lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 6 hanggang alas 10 ng umaga sa 1PH sa Signal TV at simulcast sa 92.3 News FM. Ted Fainon at DJ Chacha. Welcome back to All Politics. It's local tonight. We are still with Attorney Rui Lopez. Okay, Attorney Rui, pag, pag-usapan naman natin yung mga may offer nyo nga po sa Davao. Ano-ano ba yung mga problema na sa tingin nyo dapat matugunan at kaya nyo tugunan kung kayo ang pipiliin ng mga Davao Sige, dagdagan ko, Cheryl. Uh, attorney, ano po yung nakikita nyo na pinakamalaking problema ng Davao sa ngayon? At paano niyo susolusyunan 'yan bilang abogado? Uh, maraming ano, maraming like Davao City na palaking siyudad. Napakaraming problema. Even when I was a congressman sa 3rd district, that was the underdeveloped area, walang kuryente, tubig, daan, eskwelahan, no? And the uh, facilities for for barangay halls, etc. wala in 19 When my father became congressman, karamihan niyan, wala, 82 barangays. Tapos sa bundok pa. So, ang kuryente mo, uh, kilometers, hindi yung pareha dito sa city, in, in, sa, sa sentro na city, na uh, cementado na lahat ang daan, may kuryente na, may tubig na. No? But in our district, napaka, wala talaga. But after my term, most of it, nalagyan na namin ng father ko ng kuryente, tubig, 
uh, daan, tinitnan, pati mga tulay kasi maraming tulay kailangan gawin. Otherwise, yung mga interior barangay hindi makalabas pagka may malakas ang ulan. So, maraming tulay ginawa. Yun know, no, eskwelahan, pati eskwelahan. High school, elementary, lahat 'yun. Mayrap, no. So, that's only the third district, but first district, marami din problema 'yan. Baha, lahat, traffic No? And uh, I heard uh, is the medyo kulang sa bilis and attention ang uh, processing of uh, papers and permits in uh, Davao City. So uh, business permits and uh, whatever, building permits, I don't know, whatever. No? So uh, in the second district, ganun din. May bundok din sila, mayroon din silang uh, and all these problems, kasama na rin yung baha. And uh, maraming problema ang Davao City. But kailangan lang talagang uh, you must utilize yung, yung budget of the city in a more efficient manner na to answer all of these problems. No? So, generally, kasi ang impression ko when I when I was Uh, pinag, pinagtitimbang ko kung whether tatakbo ba ko hindi. And I was observing the people of Davao for the past 12 years. Mm-hmm. Bakit, bakit hindi? Walang, walang nagpipresenta himself. No? To be an, an alternative to the Dutertes. No? Uh, nobody. And, and I was, bakit nobody? Nobody. And, uh, and I fa- just found out na mga tao pa sa Davao takot. Takot sa mga Duterte. Takot. Yung mga negosyante, pag uh, nalaman nila you are criticizing the Duterte administration, iniipit nila. Uh, yung mga mga taong uh, against them. Naturally. Uh, Attorney, uh, hindi ba kakuha ng mga lingap? Ganyan. So, so what is it? What is it? Ang problema doon sa Davao, ang ginawa ng mga kasi mga Duterte is inefficient siguro yung the way they handle. Bakit billions na inutang ng Davao City? Bakit ngayon baha pa rin ng baha? All throughout these years. The same, the same, the same places. Nagbukay na sila, naglagay na sila ng whatever that is. Nagutang ang Davao City as a local government. Ganun pa rin, baha pa rin. Ngayon, uh, uh, yung uh, for example, uh, kasi ang ginagamit kasi ng, ng Duterte is to perpetuate themselves in power. So, so, puro patronage politics. Yung lingap, for example, lingap. How many amounts of the city budget that is being spent doon sa lingap ng mga, ng mga taga-dabaw, you go to the, which is the Southern Philippines uh, Medical Center, na parang uh, ano, yung DOH hospital, no? kompleto naman yun. Tapos, you go there, and then, hindi ka ng lingap tulong, tulong ng gobyerno, ngayon yung lingap, yung lingap, kung kakampi nila, bigyan. Kung hindi lang kakampi, hindi na bigyan. Hmm. Hmm. And then, uh, if, you, if, you, if you come to think of it, all throughout these years, ganun lang sila ng ganun. Pwede na lang nagtayo ng hospital. Hmm. O district hospitals. When I was a congressman, nagtayo ako ng district hospital in Marino, which is the farthest from the city, city proper. is the ma- farthest area. No? Mga cultural minorities, mga bagobos nandun. No? I I built a I had a complete district hospital with an ambulance, sur, uh, surgery room, uh, pharmacy, wards, office, clinics, etc. Completo and in a in a wide area compound. So, ano completo? I got that from asking the help of uh, President Joseph Era Estrada at the time. The budget for that. But ngayon nakatiwangwang lang. Hmm. Wala, puro kambing lang yan nandun. I mean, kasi politika yung ano nila, to perpetuate them such a power. But, well, you can, you know, may, iba kasi yung prinsipyo ng father ko. A father ko, when you're elected, you serve, and you serve people well. And then, maybe, and hoping, maybe, in the next election, they will remember what you did, and will vote for you. Mm-hmm. Puntahan po natin isa Attorney Roy, puntahan po natin isa pang problema sa Davao ang traffic. Paano nyo sosolusyonan? Traffic 
Uh, actually, I have not uh, really studied that very well, no? but just like in Metro Manila, when I noticed, saan nagkukumpulan yung mga sasakyan? Doon sa bridge. So, siguro, lagyan mo ng dagdag na bridge, dagdag, para merong alternate route sa mga tao. And then, uh, I, I, ang, ang idea of my father was you expand the city with the circumferential roads. Just like in Metro Manila, second month. My father started that with what you call diversion road in the vow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Di na yun ang father ko yan. Cementado. Laki. 19, 1969 yata. 1970. When he was the mayor. Start, 71. Started that, that one. Walang kabahay-bahay doon. In diversion road. But now, puno na. So, the next one should be you build another another circumferential road para mag-expand ang tao hindi sila nagsisiksikan dito sa baba sa sentro hindi nagsisiksikan so that's what probably answer the uh, traffic Attorney probably. Roy isang maiksi na lamang po bakit sa tingin nyo kayo ang dapat piliin or iboto ng mga taga Davao City? Well, uh, if gusto ng mga tao that kind of service na uh, my father sir, uh, ano, uh, provided when he was the mayor, the kind of public servant he is. Uh, kung yan ang gusto ninyo, to be in the vow, na ganyan ang, ganyan ang pamalakad, then uh, vote for me. Uh, they vote for me because that's the one I'm going to do. Yun lang. As an alternative to what the Duterte have been doing. Ito, yung style ng father ko. Yun lang. I'm just offering the people an alternative. Dahil ano po ba ang style ng mga Duterte? Yun, as I've said, uh, puro pamulitika lang, puro politika, puro perpetuating themselves in power. No? And uh, we, we stand by the record, my father, my, our family, me. Hmm. We stand by the record, wala kaming issue or anything about corruption, about anomalia. Kaya nga, kaya nga, even I, ayaw kong pumasok ng politika eh. Kasi mahirap ito sa father ko. Mahirap yung politika. See, gagastos ka sa eleksyon. Pagkatapos, manalo ka. Mag-serve ka pa sa kanila. I mean, what kind of... That's why kami, poor, poor candidates kami. My father, me, mga poor candidates kami. No, because, kung gagastos ka ng malaki just to serve, what is that? Di ba? Eh, di ba? Ba't ka gasto sa malaki just to serve? Di ba? Pinaghirapan mo yung pera, like me, pinaghirapan ko as a lawyer. So that's why, kami, we're poor candidates. We're poor candidates. Okay. Uh, sa amin, no reason for us to 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 do anything except to serve. Mm-hmm. Wala kami ano, may father, malinis lahat. Oh, kung sa Bisaya pa, why mansa ang among pangalan. Because that's what we are, we are very careful in that. Me, mga kapatid ko, we're very careful in that. Ako, we're pahabol pa ako ng isang tanong. Attorney, uh, ang sinasabi ho ngayon, eh, the Dutertes, no? the family of the Duterte enjoys uh, siguro the majority of the support ng mga Davawenyos. Ano pong tingin nyo doon? Hindi naman. Uh, I would say, kasi sa kanila, marami silang supporter, campaigner. Kasi, for example, sa city budget, almost 2 billion na B, as in boy. 2 billion. Contractual lang. Ibig sabihin, yung kanilang mga tao, contractual, 2 billion. Ang regular employees ng city, ang budget niya every year is almost 900, 900 million something. Yan ay, ano pa yan, yung talagang civil service yan. Meron pa yung mga lead credits, meron pa yung mga bonuses and whatever. 990 million. But, 2 billion for contractuals? So, ang dami ng tao ang sinisweldohan. Kasama pa siguro media men doon. Sa Davao, kaya kita mo, walang news. Walang news against them. Even me, about me. But anyway... Pero ang tingin po ninyo, ang suporta ng mga Davaoenyo, eh, kumihina na para sa mga Duterte? O ano pong tingin nyo doon? That's what I want to find out in this election. Mm-hmm. Although, I will tell you, 
uh, when I filed my candidacy, uh, there are people, of course, was happy that I tumakbo ako. Finally, a Lopez challenge to the test, they say. I mean, they're happy and uh, uh, quiet lang. Takot na mga tao, quiet lang. Pero sabi ko, ba't kayo matatakot? I mean, who are they? Lahat mo kami, taga-dabaw rin naman. You know? Uh, let's see. I mean, I don't know. I don't know whether they still had the support or people want change. All right. That's why I'm offering myself na, you know, as an alternative. You want uh, something like this? Yeah. All right. So, okay, Bernie, magbe-break po muna tayo. Up next, mapapasabak ba o mapapaaroy si Attorney Roy sa aming challenge? That's coming right up. Sarap na kwentuhan kung saan walang bawal pag-usapan. Gabi-gabi, makakasama ang mga tito ng bayan. Hey, Mara, dito ka na. Pasok na. <laughs> walang pa. Ayan o, dalawa o. Walang pa kama natin. <laughs> Magaling hindi lang sa kalokohan at kulitan, pati na rin sa masinsinang talastasan. The Bible get both a negative reading and a positive reading. Dito lang sa... Huwag po sa bago nitong oras, alas 8 ng gabi, dito sa 1PH. Kumusta mga paps? Jay Tanuk po. Panoorin niyo po ang mga mahalagang balitang hatid namin sa inyo sa One Balita Pilipinas. Mag-rescan lang ng inyong digital TV boxes para patuloy na mapanood ang mga programa ng 1PH. Wan Balita Pilipinas, lunes ang gabernes, alas 7.30 ng gabi, dito sa Wan PH. You're still watching All Politics is Local and this time around, nako, sasabak sa ating challenge yes. ang ating bisita ng si Attorney Roy Lopez. At ang tawag dito is Zoom with Black. <laughs> Ayan. Game ka ba, Attorney Roy? Yes, good afternoon to everybody. Yes, uh, I'm sure. So, <laughs> Attorney Rui, this is called Zoom with Blank. We'll give you names and then you'll tell us what you think about each name that we're gonna mention. Sure. Okay, game? Game. All right. Okay, first name natin. Makakatunggalin nyo to. Baste <laughs> Duterte. Well, sa the youngest son, I think, of uh, President uh, Rudy Duterte, and uh, he's, uh, I don't know, I don't know what his uh, qualifications are. I, I, I do not also know what uh, he has achieved as a vice mayor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you That's, don't know him personally, Paul? No, I do not know him. It's the, in the family of uh, Duterte, I only know personally is uh, Rudy Duterte. He's the only one I know mm -hmm. in their family. Pero hindi yeah. ako partner. Sige, sige. Doon sa nakita nyo, kasi taga-Davao ka, base, base ka sa Davao, at naging vice mayor nyo siya, ano ang narinig nyo o naramdaman nyo sa pagiging vice mayor niya? No, I have not heard anything from him or his work as a vice mayor. Uh, uh, well, he, he, well, my impression is he became a vice mayor because the uh, they want to have a dynasty, so the mayor is held by uh, uh, Rudy Duterte before, and then uh, Sara, 
uh, they were the ones uh, having that musical chair between the two of them, Mr. the mayor and vice mayor. And then uh, um, since uh, Sarah does not want, did not want to run for, oh, President uh, Duterte, Mayor Duterte ran for president. So, Bakanti yung uh, position for vice mayor, then they have to fill it up with another Duterte, which is the brother, uh, Bastet, I think the youngest. That's, uh, that's only, that's the one, uh, what I know on. I don't know his qualifications or whatever. He ran, an, I think, unopposed. Uh-huh. And even now, I mean, uh, before he filed for for mayorship, he he's still unopposed. Well, I, of course, I heard, I heard yung uh, about his, uh, well, not I heard, but I, saw, I think I saw about news about him with the uh, artista or something, you know, so for <laughs> boy, something like that. <laughs> so, attorney, um, halimbawa, kasama natin siya sa Zoom meeting na ito. Eh, ano huh. na masasabi niyo sa kanya? May gusto ko ba kayong sabihin sa kanya na ngayong siya na ang inyong makakalaban? Well, uh, I could say to him that uh, may, may the best man win, meaning to say, uh, you, you court the people for votes, I will court the people for votes. Let's see what the people wants. Uh-huh. Partner? Yeah. Mm. Next name. O, yung next name natin. Ito dapat yung makakalaban mo originally, <laughs> no? Yeah. Matakbong busy na eh. Ano mm. sabi mo naman kay uh, Inday Sara Duterte? I will not say, of course, uh, the, what people have been telling me about kind of, uh, you know, sharing uh, personal info about about her. But I would say, well, uh, this one I'll tell you. I asked once uh, Rudy Duterte when we were in during a campaign sortie. We were together on the stage, and I uh, I uh, asked him. I asked him uh, how are his children because he was asking how are how was my how are my children also, and uh, uh, he said uh, they were still uh, studying and etc. And then I asked him. Among your children, who who do you think is uh, uh, all of your children? I said uh, will be very obedient to you, uh, you because of your personality. Sabi niya, sabi ni Digong because I call him Digong. Si President Duterte, sabi niya, um, among his children, uh, si Sara ang hindi niya kaya. And I said why? Babae yun ah. Sabi niya, oo. Oh, mas matapang pa sa akin yun, Ruy. That's what he told me. That's what he told me. So, that's my impression of uh, Sarah Duterte. So, tingin nyo po itong kanyang desisyon na tumakbo bilang vice presidente, katulad nga po ng sinabi ni Pangulong Duterte na wala siyang kaalam-alam natatakbo na vice presidente. Hindi nila pinag-usapan. So you're not surprised na ganun po ang sinabi ni Pangulong Duterte? Yes. Um, it's President Rudy Duterte which uh, was uh, uh, asking her to run for president as a fact. And uh, the way I uh, analyze the, the news and the statements, uh, Sarah Duterte doesn't want to run for a national office. Uh, so, kind of sort of a compromise to what this, her father wanted her to do and what she wanted her to do, she ran for uh, vice mayor. Yeah. Vice, she ran, uh, vice president. She ran for vice president. And uh, when when people t- told me that she ran for vice president, I said, uh, or they were offering uh, Sarah to run for vice president. I told my friends and etc. that uh, President Rudy Duterte, or why would she do that? You know, why would she do that? Just like just like the way Duterte also 
said in uh, the public in public etc is the number one in the survey so why would you run for vice president to another candidate who is behind you in the survey i mean that's illogical for a uh, for polit- politics mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's uh, illogical that is why even uh, i was sent uh, i say, i'd say i was also surprised that she ran for vice president no? and uh, what's the use for her running for vice president what for i mean what for what why will she run for vice president what for for what reason and attorney your message siguro kay uh, Inday Sara anong sasabihin mo sa kanya kung maka-zoom natin well uh, good luck i mean you, you made your choice you didn't follow your father uh, good luck you're old enough to decide for yourself mm-hmm. ganun lang naman talaga yeah Hot. <laughs> At puntahan po natin, pangatlo, pasensya na po talagang lisahan natin ay puro Duterte. Pero ito po talaga nagkaroon kayo ng relasyon. Naging maganda po ang inyong naging relasyon. Kaya lang nagkaroon po ng lamat. President Rodrigo Duterte. To be honest, I do not believe in him as a uh, national figure. I don't believe in him, and uh, uh, because uh, we be, we both been became congressmen in 1998 to 2001, and we were seatmates. Kasi magkatabi kami double seating, and uh, during that experience in Congress, you can see napakalaki na mga problema ng Pilipinas, sobrang laki. It requires a person really to have competence, political will, um, uh, and avoid na dami po foreign affairs, education, health, environment, lahat ng problema sa Pilipinas. Grabe ang laki. And I could not see him competent to do that, become president, and act as the president. But the people voted for him, so okay. Yeah. At kung kaharap niyo po siya, ano po ang gusto niyong sabihin kay Pangulong Duterte? I was thinking of that, you know, when you were asking me that question. But I said, I'll say to him, um, Mayor, I call him Mayor, but I'm Mr. President, you were given already the chance to serve the people that is really your within, within your heart, you know, you want to serve people. The people, you were given the chance to become Mayor, You were given the chance to become a congressman. You were given the chance to become uh, the president of this country. So all throughout those years, maybe it's time for you to reflect. Sigurado ako, in your own mind, ginawa mo na yung mga dapat mong gawin. Believing in yourself that you're helping the people, helping this country. And uh, with... 30 years of something in serving people and at your age maybe time for you to rest and retire you know uh, ser- serving people is not uh, a lifetime uh, no uh, being in office is a uh, uh, maybe You're given a chance, you'll be thankful for it. And uh, kung nagawa mo na yung dapat na gagawin or you were given the chance, opportunity, then uh, let the others also be given a chance to do that. But tell uh, yourself, uh, Sir President, time for you to retire. Naawa naman nga ako sa iyo. In fact, when my father died suddenly in 1997, while in office as a congressman, I, uh, I, uh, I was deeply saddened for my father and one of that was that uh, he was not able to rest being a public servant i was talking to him, my father a few months before he died and i was telling him what will he do will he still run again back go back to politics and etc and he said no t- time for me to retire and uh, i was happy 
and what and I ask him what are you going to do? He'll go back to the our farm in uh, Baguio Kalinan, which is the in the foothills of Mount Apo. He built a house there and plant and plant uh, whatever he wants there. And then uh, be active. And he said we will be active in church uh-huh. to have peace. To have peace before you place the before you face the Lord yeah. in the afterlife. <clears throat> so that's what I would say to to President Duterte. Time for you to you know rest. That's enough. Attorney, yung next uh, personality natin is uh, someone close to your heart, no? Uh, isang Lopez ito. Elias mm. Lopez, pag nakazoom natin, ha? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what do you think of him and ano yung mensahe mo sa kanya? My father? Yeah. Oh. Oh, he's my... I... People, may mga taong may idol, etc. My, my idol was my father. Because, of course, I uh, grew up uh, under his uh, tutelage and this... Uh, Uh, parental guidance, but you know, uh, he was a person, you know, very down to earth, brilliant, uh, and uh, he was gifted. At and paharap niyo po ngayon, Attorney Roy, ang inyong ama. Kayo po'y muling tumatakbo, bumabalik sa politika. Kung kaharap niyo po siya ngayon, what would you tell him? I'll tell him, uh, Dad, um, I think this is what you want me to do. I'll tell him. I think this you want me to do. Seeing Davao City as it is for the past uh, decades, I will tell him that... Uh, This is what you you would want me to do, and uh, I'll try my best, you know, to uh, be able to to win and uh, serve the people the way you serve them, mm-hmm. because they deserve that kind of ser- service. Uh, the my father has shown to the people the world. Thank you very much, Attorney Rui Elias Lopez. Will a Lopez return and finally overthrow the Dutertes as the local chief executive of Davao City? Davao, you decide. I'm Jay Taruk. And I'm Cheryl Kwasim. Your community matters. That's why all politics is local. Pamilya.